This show is brought to you by Rose Garden Wine from the Erat Estate. Hello again. Welcome back to the second segment of Cuisines and Folklores Around the World. If you remember from our first segment, we explore various cities around the world, their highlights, their folklores, and of course their culinary delicacies. Today we're in Frankfurt, Germany, and with me is our tour guide, Christina. My name is Valerie Wildman. Welcome. So Christina, tell me, we're in a square now and it's called Rumeberg? Rumeberg. Rumeberg. It means Roman Hill. Roman Hill? Yes. And why is it called that? Because of our city hall, which is called Roma, and that means the Roman house. The Roman house, yes. and we're looking at it right now. Yes. Now, why is it called the Roman house? Because the owner before had very good connections of commerce with Italy, especially with Rome, and the inhabitants of Frankfurt called him the Roman man. The place is today like it was before the Second World War, but these houses were rebuilt, and they were inaugurated in December last year. Now, on the way over here, you were telling me that this fountain is sometimes filled with wine? In the 16th century, during the coronation banquets, there was built another fountain of justice, which was filled with beer and wine for the inhabitants of Frankfurt, for the festival of the coronation. And we filled it with our specialty, with the cider, the apple wine. The apple, apple wine, wine, which we'll be talking about <laughs> later in the segment. <laughs> That's right, the home of the original Frankfurter. I'm sorry, but the American hot dog did not originate in the States. Frankfurt is also the city where people of many nationalities meet, because Frankfurt's at the crossroads of most of the major routes of the world. Behind me, you see the century house known as the Hauptwache. The Hauptwache is really an area that's at the center of Frankfurt. But this building right here was originated in 1730. About 20 years ago, back around 1963, it was taken apart stone by stone so that an underground shopping area and major transportation city center could be built. Then, stone by stone, it was put back together again, and it's now a cafe. Below ground, there is an underground shopping center, there's a subway center, it's also the center for the bus stations, and generally just a meeting ground, central square of the city. I'll be talking to you about the other highlights of the city, its folklore, and its cuisine. So stay with me. I found another highlight of Frankfurt. Right in the midst of modern-day high-rises stands the old opera house. I've been told that the opera house was destroyed back during the war, and then, while it was in ruins, another opera house was built. It's been reconstructed in the 60s, it's no longer used as an opera house. It's used as a meeting place and also a place for modern day concerts. Santana, Sammy Davis Jr. meets here. And let me ask you this, have you ever seen an opera house with a cafe up in the balconies that overlooks the city? It's wonderful, huh? One of the main arteries of tourism and commerce alike is the beautiful Main River here in Frankfurt. Main is spelled, by the way, like Main Street, USA. And off in the background, you can see the Three Kings Cathedral. Beautiful, huh? You see swans, pedal boats, canoes, sightseeing boats, and then you see the barges going through. All along the Mine River are museums, at least eight museums. You see couples strolling romantically, children. And behind the Three Kings Cathedral is one of the most romantic attractions of all. Come on, let's go see. It's called Sachsenhausen. It was very nice meeting you, Andrea. Bye-bye. Avita Sain. Avita Sain. 
Here we are in romantic Sachsenhausen. It's lovely to stroll along the picturesque winding narrow streets through the pubs and the jazz cellars and the restaurants. Today is the last day of the Fountain Festival, where they celebrate every year and elect a queen in traditional costume. The most famous thing about Sachsenhausen is this, apple wine, or apple wine, if I'm saying it properly. The folklore of Sachsenhausen has it that an innkeeper back in 1745, I believe is the date, was the first one to make apple cider alcoholic. And of course, it became famous. Apple wine is drunk by everyone in Frankfurt. They love it from the juice, which is called Füssen, to the most fermented version, which is called Alter. This is Alter. I'm about to sample it. I hear it's very strong. It is, but it's good. It's good, as they say here. We're in a wine growing village called San Martin in the Rhine Pfalz region. That's how you pronounce it. Rhine Pfalz. Rhine Pfalz. <laughs> Rhine Pfalz. And I'm sitting here with Mr. Erat, Klaus Erat, one of the most well known wine growers in the area. And he's explaining to me a little about the church and, and the region. Now, you were saying that this used to be occupied by Romans, this whole area? Uh, it was first populated by the Celtics uh -huh. who had their. Uh, their place where they worshipped the moon and afterwards the Romans came in the second century after Jesus Christ uh -huh. and uh, they had a crossroad here. The main road went through the Palatinate forest uh, to Trier where was the capital of the Roman uh, Empire for 100 years approximately. So the capital was very near here of the Roman uh, Empire. Approximately 100 or 200 miles from here. Uh -huh. And these crossroads were very important to the Romans. And so therefore they built their uh, fortress up on this hill just over there. Uh -huh. From there they could protect the whole region here and the streets west, east, north, south. I see. And then this fortress now is a castle, is that right? And now it's a castle. It was built in the 12th century uh -huh. to protect the population here mm -hmm. because uh, the uh, people lived here uh, along the uh, little rivers uh -huh. and um, they grow their wine and it was a very important cultural uh, region for the Holy Roman Empire, even for the German Empire. Uh, it was the sustenance of their whole empire. Uh, this region yeah. was a sustenance of And at this uh -huh. time you had no uh, industrial life, you had more agricultural life. Right. And so agricultural regions were more important than the industrial ones. Of course. In the moment, the most important thing we still have is the wine, what we had a thousand as, years ago. As the and income the to the economy to too. Years. Oh, that's yeah. right. And then the Germans took it over as an industry. Now the Kropsburg is with now belongs to the Erat family, your yes, family, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. so you actually live up in this castle. And we're about to go see it right now. Okay, join me. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is more beautiful than I ever imagined. High on a hill above San Martin, surrounded by a forest of tall chestnut trees, on the edge of a sea of vineyards reaching far into the Rhine Valley, lies the castle of Schloss Kropsberg. Sounds like the beginning of a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. You know, it's funny, when I think of Rhine wine, I think of sweet white wine, but are they all sweet? As what we tasted uh, before was a Kropsberg, it was dry. Uh-huh. And uh, the question of fermentation. Any wine you can ferment to a dry product mm -hmm. or you can ferment it to a sweet or semi-dry product. I see. It so, depends. so Rhine wine, it, it sometimes is fermented longer, so it's not always sweet. It's too fine. Everything just um, depends from farmer to farmer. I see. Now we're in August though, and usually when is the harvest? Is it in October usually? The main months for uh, harvest is October. It's mostly October. You, you have wine inspectors roaming through the vineyards even? looking Unfortunately. Some Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, skol. <laughs> Let's try yeah. some of this German sausage here, shouldn't we? Since we're in yeah. the land of Frankfurt, more or less. <clears throat> we forgot to take, we forgot, we forgot the, the plates. Huh? Ah, who we cares? This okay, is in the country, so what do we care? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think our ancestors did the same. They had no plates and no forks. There you go. Forks were invited, <laughs> in, I think, on the court of well, thank you, Klaus, for everything. I hope you'll come to dinner at the Gravenbruch tomorrow night and bring one of your wines. Okay, tomorrow is that one. Good. I hope you'll thank join you. us too. You know that 
The Kompinski Hotel here used to be an old manor house. It was owned by a count, and it still maintained all of its character and luxury. I'll tell you what. We'll go take a look, see what you think. I have a feeling you're going to fall in love with it, too. the beer garden area here. With me now is Nick Avenal and he is one of the Kompinski Brabenhoch experts. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what, right. what is this gate? How old is it? Uh, basically this is the, the oldest part of Brabenhoch. The walls here are up to 400 years old and this is in fact the original gateway to the manor house of Brabenhoch. In the inner courtyard we now have a beer garden. Uh, in the summer months uh, from in the evenings uh, one can sit in the courtyard and have a, a beer or a glass of wine. What about the Dixieland? You have to tell them about the Dixieland jazz in Germany. Uh, in Germany, Dixieland jazz is a great pastime. So on a Sunday morning from 11 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we have different Dixieland jazz bands playing in the courtyard. And people come from far and wide with bicycles and children and so on. And there's great big Volksfeststimmung. And not, not, party. not only do they just drink beer in this beer garden, but you also have the apple vine here, too. The famous Frankfurt the apple vine. famous Frankfurt apple vine. We're going to go take a look at the indoor restaurant, so if you'll excuse us, it was the old horse stables. Oh, stay with us, too. We have the gourmet cook, Chef Bizel, coming up. And now I have the great privilege of introducing you to the great gourmet chef. Dieter Biesler. Mr. Biesler is the executive chef here in charge of the Gourmet Restaurant, which, by the way, won the Michelin star last year. And Chef Biesler is also the holder of many international awards, including the Codon d'Or from Monte Carlo. Thank you, Chef Biesler, for allowing us into your kitchen today. Thank you very much, Valerie. It's a pleasure for me, too. Good. What is it that you're preparing today, and, and what are the ingredients? I'm going to prepare for you a goose liver stuffed cutlet of wheel with uh, mushroom, two or three kinds of mushroom, and mushroom potatoes. All of these are the ingredients that go into the veal stuffed with the goose liver? Yes. All, yes? Great. Now tell me what each of these things are. Two know. kinds of mushrooms. We call it Pfifferlinge. Pfifferlinge? Pfifferlinge uh -huh. and bolletus. Goose liver. Oh, it's a giant goose, huh? Yes. Or else it's he has a liver problem? No, it's <laughs> the first quality. It's beautiful. Cut it off wheel. Uh-huh. For how many people with this? For about six. Six people. Yes. Uh-huh. Potatoes. Oh, I thought these were mushrooms too. No. You're going not. to show me how you cut these, yes, right? Yes, of course. Fantastic. All right. Parsley mm -hmm. and thyme. This is thyme. thyme. Ah, it looks so fresh. Yes, it's, yeah? it's fresh thyme. You bought from the market or? Yes. They sell it in the stems like that. Yes, that's uh -huh. right. Uh-huh. Butter, of course. Right. Cognac. Cognac. Pepper meal. Fantastic. And this is a sauce that we're it's going to use. It's a brown, uh, brown sauce stock. All right, so t show me how you make these mushrooms out of the potatoes. I'm dying to know. First, I cut with this special knife. Aha, uh -huh, so bowl. it's a, a ball. You make a ball with this little scooper, like you would use yes. for uh, melon balls or ice cream cones. And it, you just carve it in there, and it makes a nice little ball very easily. This kind uh -huh. of potato is very popular in every kitchen. We call it Parisian potato. Parisian, yeah. as opposed to the white potato. I see it's very yellow. It's yes. a beautiful golden color. Uh huh. And then I use this to <gasps> cut a stem. Do you know I have never seen one of these nozzles that you would get in a pastry shop for icing cakes for making the decorations to cut a potato ball. That's fascinating. And you're taking the knife and you're whittling it around the utensil so that the stem stays intact inside the nozzle. Yes. Oh, that's very, that's not so difficult. And a beautiful mushroom. Look at that. May I hold it? <laughs> it looks like a little white mushroom from the forest. That's beautiful. Now, 
Die Now, what, what is the name of this again? Steinpilze. Steinpilze. Yes. Can the people at home, can they use uh, the mushrooms that we have, just the regular mushrooms that we find in the store? Yes, you can use white mushrooms. White mushrooms. Yes. But if you can get them, each one of these has a different flavor, is that right? Yeah. Now this, That's a different flavor. this is a different yeah. flavor. Okay, very good. Now, so what next? How do you prepare the, the cutlets? Can you show me that? So you take a very large, sharp knife. And you, you cut in between the ribs, right along the bone, is that right? Yes, that's right. And that's how you can tell for how many people, by counting how many bones this there are? This is for how many six, ribs? six persons. Uh-huh. Because you might want two for some people. And no, no, one, one, one per one person. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to Take cut a with a small knife, uh -huh. the pocket uh -huh. to place the goose liver. Uh huh. Just, just a little bit below the bone, where the yes. bone stops. <gasps> a little hole maybe the size of the palm of a hand, may or maybe less, like so. Yes. Uh huh. And this is where we're going to put the goose liver. Now, how do you cut that? Just cut a, a thin slice yeah. for each? For each cutlet. Uh huh. Oh, you don't even, uh, I thought you were going to chop it and grind it. No, you stick no, the whole no. thing I, in there. I, don't, I need use it naturally. Uh -huh. why, why not chop it into little pieces? Is it better in one piece, no, the goose liver? because I have so, uh, two kind of spices, the thyme and parsley and mushroom, and this is a test who goes very good with the nature goose liver. Uh-huh, so it's better to keep it whole and then stick all of these things in the pocket. Yes. Aha! Uh -huh. So I close the pocket. Okay. With now we. Oh, you just use a regular toothpick yeah. to close it up, and it's like a, a safety pin. You're sticking yes. it in like a little safety pin. It's cute. It's lovely. I'm now. going to salt the cutlet. Salt. Uh huh. Just simple salt with a couple of pinches. That looks like a, a very white pepper, is that right? It's, it's white a white pepper. pepper. Yeah. It's a milder pepper. Yes, a I milder see. pepper. Uh -huh. So what else? Ah, so now we're taking the real mushroom. Clean it. Clean it with a knife. So you don't need a brush to scrub it. You just scrape it a little bit. It's long stems, these mm -hmm. mushrooms, huh? They're beautiful. So now we have all the ingredients on the tray and we're ready to cook, right? Yes. All right, let's begin. We have our thyme, our parsley, our butter. Oh, by the way, the uh, potatoes now have been blanched with a little bit of butter and hot, salty boiling water for about three minutes after they're cut into the shape of the mushroom before we begin cooking. And he's now using clarified butter in both pans. Um, in other words, he's taken the cream out in the cooking process, but any butter is fine. You don't have to necessarily do that. We're waiting for the butter to heat up. Voila, we begin. Turning over now to the other side. Oh my gosh, beautiful golden brown. And now we take the beautiful blanched mushroom potatoes. They're gorgeous. I was told that they're in the pan until they turn, what did you say, the golden sun color of the sun of Texas. That's what he said. Everything is sauteing now. We're taking the, the juice from the cutlet and the butter and we're basting as we're sauteing. It smells so good. Everything's getting a nice golden, golden color. It's making sure that it stays moist. It seems like that's very important in all of this so it doesn't get dry, that the juice mm -hmm. always stays on the veal, right? Yeah. And that way the flavor of the goose liver probably circulates more too. Yeah. Uh -huh. These get brown as yeah, you a saute little, it? A little bit. Just a little bit on Just the edges. Put it in a dish, casserole serving dish. Take And now we're putting, ooh, that's brandy. And the heat's still very, very hot. Most of the uh, veal liquid's gone. It smells delicious. Putting in some of the butter with with the brandy. You just put it a dash of the brandy, huh? Just, just one, just, choo, just, a dash. just a dash. 
and that looks like two uh, teaspoons of butter. Yes, two, two, two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Mix it up very, very good. Because, it. because mushrooms like love the butter. The mushrooms, the mushrooms love mushrooms the butter. The butter goes very good. Oh yeah. The the real mushrooms we're talking, not the potato no, mushrooms. The real ones. The okay. real ones love the butter. And now we're getting ready to put in the mushrooms so that they can fall in love with the butter and the brandy. Put them flat so that each each mushroom touches the pan so that they all can saute evenly in the juice. We've got the pepper. We're moving the pan so that everything sautés evenly. Oh, it's beautiful. But he flips it around like that. This is veal stock, right? Yes. It's very rich. Yes. Make it very thick so you cook it a long time so it's thick. And now we have the heavy uh, cream. <gasps> It's making a beautiful colored sauce. It's a very golden beige color. Don't forget to take the toothpick out. Oh yeah, you can make sure you take the toothpick out now, he says. Put it on the plate. The time? The time goes in at the last minute with the mushrooms. Oh, look at that, right on top of the veal cutlet. I cannot believe it. Looks like a painting, all those colors. Oh, so the parsley's for the, the potato mushrooms, and the thyme is for the real mushrooms, and they go on the side, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh-huh, that's, that's good to know. It shows in there, too, the, the pride that he has. Ah, here comes the wine, and the wine has been selected by Monsieur Erat, who we met earlier at the Chateau. So what have you chosen for us here today? Uh, I chose the 81, a white wine from Schloss Kopsburg. It's uh, dry, we call it in German trocken. Trocken? It means, it means totally fermented. Oh, so then means it's very dry. Totally dry. Uh-huh. Yeah. And 81 is a very uh, special year for uh, some reason? 81 was a very good year, 81, 83. And now we're waiting for 84. And you're hoping, <laughs> See, right? Wait, yeah. The 81 was good for the dry and the, and the, the sweet wine, for is that a... the dry wine, you have to have a very good crop, a very good quality, because on the dry wine, you find any mistake a wine could have. So therefore, you choose the best wines for the dry wine. And so you don't have to be as careful with the uh, sweet wine, is that right? Uh, we should be careful, but... Uh, so right. As much, as <laughs> much, <laughs> as much <laughs> care. I, I understand. Sure, yeah. So, uh, tell me, what would this wine go with? You say it's very dry, and and I know that we're having. Uh, I'll tell you all now. We're having veal, and often I hear people say you drink red wine or rosé with veal. Do you believe that? Do you think that white wine should go with yes. with everything? Or? One rule: you should drink red wine with dark meat. Uh -huh. White wine with um, light uh -huh. uh, meat, but I think it depends on your own taste and nobody should be uh, forced to uh, do what he doesn't like. Really? Oh, it's per <gasps> and I don't uh, know. This is my weak moment. <laughs> 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 Look at this, yeah? It's lovely. I feel like Great, Her Majesty the Queen. Oh my gosh. Look how beautiful. Ooh, it's like a coronation, huh? You know, we were just talking about earlier that in the gourmet restaurants, usually when uh, a plate is served in the gourmet restaurant, suddenly a hush, like now, comes over the table. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, huh? Oh, Even more beautiful than I remembered <laughs> just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Was it your choice? Shall we dig in? Huh? Shall we dig yeah. in? We say in America, dig in. Yeah. It's not very uh, okay. gourmet, okay. I realize, but <laughs> join us, huh? Mmm. Oh. Mm, great. Mm. Isn't it good? Mmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely the way you do that. I hope you have enjoyed the show and our visit to Frankfurt, Germany and the Kempinski here in Frankfurt, which we'd like to thank very much. Also, Chef Bissell, who is hiding in the kitchen right now, preparing other meals for his guests. And our other guest, Monsieur Erat. Thank you. Your wines have given me great pleasure and added immensely to our meal. And thank you all for joining us.
Thank you. Mm -hmm.